Those days where I fast are also really good for mindfulness. I actually use them as a kind of detox day, a day where I'm very conscious of my body, of my thoughts, of uh, how I see the world, how I react to things. And it's very nice to have those two days in the mayhem of life and the chaos and everything to say, you know what, this is a, a more simple day, a more zen day. A few years ago, I had surgical menopause. It means that I had surgery and overnight I went into menopause. I had just turned 50 and I probably had a few years ahead of me before I could have menopause. I also take a medication, which is a medication following my cancer to prevent the cancer from returning. And that medication also gives you menopausal symptoms. So the two combined mean that I really put on weight very quickly over a couple of months. And there's a chart in my health application that shows it is pretty dramatic. On top of that, of course, there was a pandemic and during lockdown, like everybody, I indulged in food because I was really one of the few pleasures we had and I ate a lot. So all of this meant that in a couple of years, I started to see a line on my scale, which I had never seen before in my life. And I put on six, seven kilos, which because I'm quite short is quite significant. So of course, I tried many things. I first tried to increase my output, as in how much calories I spend, by increasing my uh, sports routine. So I gave myself a challenge during lockdown to move from running five kilometers a couple of times a week to move 10 kilometers. And I did that. Uh, so I run instead of three times a week, I run four to five times a week. And I, one of those uh, runs was 10 kilometers and several were about seven or eight kilometers. Um, however, that didn't have a massive impact on my weight because really to lose weight, you need to eat less. So then I went to see a nutritionist who helped me a lot. She gave me some uh, indications about how the glycemic index work and how in the morning you may have a rush of sugar with your breakfast and then it goes down and that's when you crave more sugar and then you do it again. And then over time, obviously you add more weight. So she uh, um, advised me to eat the carb mostly at the beginning of the day, but then past lunchtime to move into protein and vegetables only. It did work for a while. However, it really didn't suit our family lifestyle because my daughter goes to school, I go to work, my husband goes to work. Um, so our family meal is in the evening and vegetable and meat in the evening is good, but we wouldn't be able to do that every uh, day. And I want to have the same meal if possible as my family. So I had to find another option. After summer 2021, when I didn't quite look like I saw uh, when I was in my swimsuit, in September 2021, I decided I had to try something else. Now, I had heard of the 5-2 diet before. The 5-2 diet is this idea that two days a week you eat less than 500 calories uh, and then the rest of the week you can eat what you want. Of course, you shouldn't like, you know, overeat, but you can really eat what you want the other days. I'd heard of it first from a former colleague who I'd seen a few years back and she was close to her 60s and she looked amazing and very slim and I asked her and she told me that she had been on the 5-2 diet for several years. And then my husband had a few colleagues at work who tried it and he saw them really losing weight very efficiently. So that really seemed to be a good result. It also appeals to me because it's like the 80-20 rule, right? 20% of what you do is actually going to uh, affect 80% of your results. And that really mathematically exactly what happens with the 5-2 diet. I do not have all the scientific knowledge behind 5-2. I didn't read a book. I didn't uh, follow a meal plan given by someone. I didn't even really went on the internet and read blogs or articles and so on. I just thought, you know what, simple. Two days, I eat 500 calories. Five days, I eat what I want. The way I do it is that I decided Mondays and Thursdays or the days for my diet. It means that I can have a full weekend eating what I want and socializing and drinking. So that doesn't affect my social life much, which is great. Um, so on Mondays and Thursdays, I usually try to delay as late as possible the time I'm going to eat something because when you start eating that's when your appetite and your hunger really manifest itself more. 
So I definitely doesn't, don't have breakfast. And lunch, if I work, actually, I may find myself only around two o'clock uh, being hungry, and then I will have a light lunch, and then I have the dinner a bit more, uh, a bit bigger at the end of the day. The light lunch, uh, I found a trick, actually, I have salad, so you can have tomato salad or cucumber salad or, you know, any kind of other salad mixed with a bit of fruit, for instance, and I just add balsamic vinegar, I don't add oil at all, so that's a very light salad. Dinner is often either, again, another big salad, uh, scrambled eggs and smoked salmon worked well, works well as well. We also uh, have a Mark Spencer. Mark Spencer is a chain of supermarket here in the UK, and they have a range of uh, diet meals, uh, which is called Eat Well for Less or something like that. And they have some you know, dishes that are less than 500 calories, 350 for instance, so if I had eaten uh, during the day, that definitely works towards my number of 500 calories. And you can have uh, lasagna, you can have chicken chow mein, you can have sweet and sour chicken, uh, there are a lot, a lot of options, uh, and they're really good, really, so that's a, that's a good tip. At the end of the, the, of the day, when I have a cup of tea, I always treat myself to a tiny, tiny piece of dark chocolate, 80% cocoa, it's very good, it has magnesium, and it's not very caloric, and it gives you this you know, feeling of like, oh, I had a little bit of something sweet. Throughout the day, I will drink lots of tea, lots of water, and if I'm peckish, uh, well, I'm hungry, sure, but if I really need a little snack, then I'm just gonna go for fruit, an apple, a clementine, a few grapes of raisins, uh, that really works well. So what were the results? Well, I saw in September 2021, and at Christmas, I had lost six kilos, uh, which, you know, it's brilliant. I'm continuing and for the first time, I'm actually sticking to something for more than three months. I'm someone who starts something, do it for three months and get bored and it's something new. But this one, I really want to turn it into a lifestyle, uh, a permanent uh, way of eating. And uh, I'm sticking to two days a week at the moment. It might be that in a few months I drop to one day a week, I'll see. But certainly that schedule suits me very, very well. Now, beyond the weight loss, there are many benefits that I found from a 5 2, and it taught me things about myself and the way I function, which were really, really interesting. So, the first thing is that you learn to accept the hunger. Now, of course, no, third world, first world problem, I live in a country and I'm lucky that I can choose to be hungry uh, and I know some people don't choose to, but you know, if we set that aside uh, and in any case we probably eat too much uh, in our societies, so learning to be hungry and that it's doable and you know, that it's not lasting very long, that's really an interesting skill I would say to develop. The second thing is that you appreciate food even more because you don't eat that much during the day. <laughs> you know, the little calories you eat, you really appreciate them. And similarly, the days where you don't diet, where you don't fast, same. You really taste the food, savor the different flavors, and are really, really conscious of uh, the quality of what you eat. So yeah, the third thing is that uh, I'm, um, much more conscious of why I eat and I can do a dif distinction between the physical hunger and the emotional hunger. So what are these two types of hungers? Here are some um, details. So what's the difference between physical hunger and emotional hunger? There are some good pointers in that book, uh, which is French, Un mois pour se libérer du sucre. It's kind of like manual, actually, workbook. It's very good. The physical hunger is something that comes progressively. It's your body that does need food and you can control it. Um, you will have physical signs such as, you know, the sensation of an empty stomach, some gargles, um, maybe a dry throat, for instance. Um, and when you eat, you will be happy to have something healthy like a salad, tomato, fruit or something, and you will really savor them. Whereas the emotional hunger comes very suddenly, abruptly, you have to have something, and usually what you fancy is um, sugar or you know crisps, something not healthy really. Physically, you won't have that much symptoms apart from being stressed or irritated and thinking, 
or having food is what I need because actually it would be comfort food. But once you learn to recognize those two kind of hungers, it's easier to adjust your behavior, especially in the second case for emotional hunger, you can try to, you know, surf the wave, ride the wave and wait until it passes or do something else that gives you comfort. Whether it's a walk, calling someone, reading a book, smelling a candle that you like, listening to the song that you prefer, but something that helps you to go over that emotional hunger. Now, one of the most important learnings from that experience is that I understood how I function, which is that for me, it's much easier to focus all my efforts on that day and restrict myself for one day than restrict myself at every meal every day. The consistency, the continuous uh, effort, I have a problem with that but two days I can do. And so I'm thinking of adapting that to my side hustle, which is this YouTube channel, which is my blog, etc. which is to not try to do it every day and, and fit it with all the stuff that I have at work, in life, etc. And it's difficult actually to find the time, but to say, okay, there will be a dedicated day at the weekend, for instance, where I do as much as possible for the blog, for the channel, so that it can progress. Those days where I fast also really good for mindfulness. I actually use them as a kind of detox day, a day where I'm very conscious of my body, of my thoughts, of uh, how I see the world, how I react to things. And it's very nice to have those two days in the mayhem of life and the chaos and everything to say, you know what, this is a, a more simple day, a more zen day. And then the last thing that I found is um, my inner strength and my mental strength. I, at the end of the day, at the end of my fast day, when I succeeded in not eating much, I feel very good about myself. I'm like, yes, Steph, that's it. You've done it again. So that's really a very interesting benefit and learning from doing the 5-2 diet. So here we go. So that's my experience with the 5-2 diet, which I really recommend if you're a bit like me. Uh, certainly worth a try and look into. Uh, I hope it inspired you and maybe by trying this diet, you will find things about yourself like I did. And I hope to see you soon. Au revoir.